What's up, you guys? Um, me again, so... Let's read some more of this. And I've been feeling depressed lately, so... Um, and I have been having suicidal thoughts. And this one right here... When you feel like giving up. On January 29th, I know it's obviously not the 29th of January, but... Let's just read this like a book. Not going uh, on on uh, chapters of it, you know, on like pages for specific days. Um, where my G-Shock uh, Golfman. Um, all right, here we go. So when you feel like giving up, here comes the yawns. I am feeble and severely broken. I, gro I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before you, and my sighing is not hidden from you. Come to me, all you who are weary, weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and that's kind of weird, um, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. And quietness and confidence is your strength. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall into exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. We are passed on every side by troubles. But we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. So let's get tired. Not Let's not get tired of doing what is good. At least the right time we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. When I've, re when I've reached the end of my physical strength, as well as that of my soul, I tend to suffer for, uh, from burnout. Then I'm running on empty. Then I'm stealing from my reserves that are already depleted. To sidestep burnout, you have to learn to rest well and say no. You don't have to be everything to everyone. You're nobody's servant, only God's. Well, that was nice. That was a nice one. Let's see if there's another one. That's... I can read a few of these. Because me, re me reading these to you guys fills me with faith. And confidence. Mm. February 3rd, God will carry you. I can't carry all these people by myself. The load is far too heavy. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. What does that mean, for salvation? I'm already saved. You're saved when you place your faith in Jesus Christ, right? Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hosp hospitality. Uh, Hospitality. Sorry, I haven't seen that one written. I've only heard that one, not read it many times. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Okay, that's just weird. Sorry. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. When you carry someone, you feel his or her weight. The Bible tells us that Christ carried the heaviest burden in the universe, all our sins. He carried it by himself on the cross. It weighed so heavily on him that he eventually died. Our sins caused his death. As the resurrected Lord, he asks us of us to also carry each, carry each other's burdens. No, not each other's hang-ups or sinful practices, but each other's pains and distress.
poke. All right, February 13th, close to God. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. We wipe even the dust of your uh, of your town from our feet to show that we have abandoned you to your fate. And know this, the kingdom of God is near. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who dil- diligently seek him. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. The Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their, their cries for help and rescues them. I am in my Father and you in me, and I in you. God is never far from us. He is really close. He is as close as your next prayer. He is one call far or near. He is not that far away from us, but boy, let me tell you, he feels like he's really far away. He's not far away from us. We're far away from him. If we're not living right, or if we still have sins that need to be confessed or repented of, we feel a trillion miles away from him. He is one call far or near. Call out to him and you will begin to understand this. Draw near to him and experience his closeness. I, whenever I pray to God, I feel completely cut off from him. I completely, I feel completely disconnected from him. I, maybe I, maybe I'm not praying right or something. Maybe it's because I'm not praying in faith. I I guess it's just, you could call them a dead prayer. Because I'm not praying with faith. Maybe that's why. Because, you know, ask whatever you ask for in his name, in the name of Jesus, it will be given to you if you believe that you have received it. If you believe you have received it. So you have to believe that in your heart that, uh, you, that he'll give it to you if it's within his will. Distance is irrelevant when you draw near to the Almighty God in the name of Jesus. There is no rift between you and Him anymore. Well, it sure feels like that, let me tell you. Right, what is that? Compassion without compromise. said the same exact thing. March. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to find a good one. When you suffer, March 27th. When you suffer, the Lord God arranged for a leafy plant to grow here, uh, to grow there, and soon it spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head, shading him from the sun. This eased his discomfort, and Jonah was very great. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. We also. Uh, for just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abund- abounds through Christ. We, <clears throat> we also glory. Wait, wait, wait. We also glory. We also glory. No wonder I was stuttering right there because that doesn't make. We also glory in our sufferings. I think they meant to say we also have glory or something, because we know that suffering produces perseverance my comfort is in my suffering is this you your promise preserves my life 
I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Discomfort is not enjoyable, yet sometimes it goes hand in hand with the gospel. Ask Paul. The mission f- the mission field was never just moonshine and roses. In fact, he endured many days and nights of suffering and lack of bread. But this is how God's kingdom takes shape. When men of God are willing to put others before themselves and endure discomfort, then God's light shines through them brighter than ever before. One more, and then I'll upload this video, and then I'll do some more of these later on. Oh yeah, dealing with doubt. This one's good. March 31st, dealing with doubt. Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? Jesus told them, go back to John and tell him what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, those with leprosy are cured. The deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. And he added, God blesses those who do not fall away because of me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. For surely I say to you, whoever is... Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. How do you do that, though? But let him ask in faith with not doubting, no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. I don't know how to pray in faith. Have I been praying wrong all this time, all these years? Because I don't, I don't, I guess I don't truly believe when I pray. Doubt is often hostile towards faith, but sometimes it is also a normal part of faith. The greatest figures in the, in the Bible had moments of doubt. I remember how Abraham laughed at God when he heard that his wife was going to have a child. Or how John the Baptist asked Jesus if he was really the Messiah. Remember the golden rule. Take your doubts to Jesus. Talk to him about the questions that bother you. He can handle it. Well, you guys, I'll upload more of these later. Hope you guys enjoy.